Frankie Calvert. And this is a suitcase whose name is in this, in this case. Yeah, all right, oh. Oh, I know. It's a living, <laughs> it's a living. And we have got Justin. Oh. Justin. Okay. Hey. Yeah, it was. I warn you, I warn you. And we have uppercase we and lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we have a shell case, but not in this case meaning a bullet, but a seashell. Ooh. I am doing a poem also. Have you ever thought that one of these is such a curiosity, so elegantly pinnacled and curved, yet it houses a miniature monstrosity? This shell has a faintish blue-black tinge, as if a writer on the fringe of the shore has slithered through intriguing purple seaweed, or fought, handed a need to score by finding the perfect seagull feather, not yet battered by brine or elemental weather, to turn into a quill and fill its tip with ink laid on by an obliging squid. That's what they did to get this inky marbling on this shell. You can hear the sea in it as well. <laughs> Once its weird inhabitant has gone, that sludgy little beast so grey and warm, it's quite a strange thing to muse upon that this spiralling shell, elegant as hell, could be part of a miniature Brighton pavilion. <laughs> but the creature that lived in it had a slimy opinion of life as it led it. It never went out. It never met a mermaid, a dolphin or a trout. Never viewed its own house from the wild outside or knew it was part of the famous British seaside. But let's not be snobbish, and let's not be hasty. The beastie that lived here was incredibly tasty. <laughs> <laughs>